Hello there, I'm Dr Kathleen McElvenna and I'm here today to talk to you about the MA in Public History and Heritage. So I wanted to start it off by giving you a sort of introduction to the team that you'll meet over the duration of the MA um, and we'll be kind of teaching you directly or potentially available for uh, supervision for um, public history consultancies or independent studies. So to start with me, I'm Kathleen McElvenna. I'm a historian specialising in 19th century British history. I'm currently um, part of a Wellcome Trust funded project called Dressing Health, which looks at postal workers and their health um, and death in the 19th century, um, which I'm heading up the public engagement aspects for that and is in partnership with the Postal Museum. Uh, prior to my academic experience, I've also worked in a range of, sort of museums um, from large nationals to small local museums. Um, I've worked for the Royal Armouries based at the Tower of London and the Science Museum Group. Um, I'm also a member of various um, organisations and associations that are linked to public history and heritage, including the International Federation for Public History and the Museums Association. And I am the, one of the conveners for the Public History IHR seminar. So I have a range of interests and academic specialisms related to history, public history um, and heritage generally. Across the course, we'll also be joined by another other range of colleagues, including Dr. Tom uh, Mayhouse, and he is the head of discipline um, for humanities. So he covers uh, his remit covers a range of uh, subjects, but he is a historian by trade and specialises in East and South um, East Asia history and European imperialism and China, China's political system. So he has a real interest in kind of global perspectives um, and an interest in kind of the public history aspects connected to those areas of the world. He also uh, works very closely with lots of heritage organisations and is really interested in developing contacts and has worked closely with various arts and heritage institutions as part of his role at Derby. Similarly, Dr Oliver Godsmark is interested in um, global and South Asian history. He also has been um, developing great links to various um, organisations and community groups and, and um, heritage institutions um, at, during his time here at Derby. So he brings a range of um, and wealth of experience and expertise. Dr Kath Feely is a senior lecturer and specialises in 19th and 20th century British and European history and heritage. Um, she is really been critical in sort of setting up this MA from the very start and has a wealth of connections um, and uh, partnerships with a range of heritage institutions and a real expertise in, in building public history. She led our Being Human um, events a few years ago. Professor Paul Elliott is also part of the team. He um, specialises in modern history and there's some really interesting um, historical specialisms related to historical geography and the history of education and the history of science. He's also worked with a range of um, arts and heritage organisations and experience in those types of public engagement. And Dr Ruth Larson, um, who is a specialist in 18th century and 19th century British history, she is our resident country house expert and there's nothing Ruth doesn't know about the country house um, and has really established great links with various country houses um, in terms of academic research as well as public history and engagement. Um, she is the programme leader for the undergraduate uh, course uh, here at the University of Derby but is available for sort of supervisions and, and appears occasionally you know, sometimes across modules. So that's the team um, of who people you be engaging with across the course but what is the course itself so it's three years of part-time study doing one module at a time what makes our course particularly unique compared to other heritage type MAs is that we include a public history consultancy which is our version of a sort of work experience module where you develop a project in partnership with an outside organisation as well as an independent study, so your own independent academic research. The programme has been designed by a team, as you've seen, with a range of experience um, and contacts with um, public history institutions. It was designed and developed in consultation with a range of organisations as well, with their input of what the sector needs and what needs to be developed. 
we really pride ourselves in the practicality of our modules. So as you'll see, some of the assessments are really different um, and challenging, looking at very practical aspects to build skills that you can apply directly into roles um, in the heritage sector or indeed the arts sector as well as building that academic expertise and specialisms as well. And we, we conduct the course in a range of ways. We try and um, engage students in, in a, a wide variety of techniques using online seminars, um, as well as trying to have guest speakers and, and continually talking to you about career development um, as well. So we try and support you in all different aspects of your studies. So what we really try and do with this is to really help you strengthen your contacts in the heritage sector and widen your industry knowledge. It's the heritage sector is such an evolving, changing um, sector. It's really growing and um, the different ways that it's growing is really important to look at. So technology has been really um, inspiring um, to, to look at and see the impacts of that. So we talk a lot about that. Um, we also are very much interested in global perspectives, so this isn't just focused on British um, heritage and history. Um, and we try and engage students in a range of different ways, including this sort of wide ranging um, assessment strategies, um, really aimed at developing kind of your personal, practical, um, hard skills, as well as soft, softer academic skills to enhance your employability, whatever direction you want to go in, whether that's the heritage, heritage sector or, or another direction. So these are the programme aims as speculated in kind of our um, official documents. So um, I'll essentially just read these, but they are to develop a critical understanding of the role of public history and heritage in shaping understandings of the past, to allow you to develop an advanced understanding of current issues and specialist practical expertise in heritage, cultural and creative industries, to develop your skills of analysis and interpretation, to enable you to understand the context of public history and heritage across the world, encouraging your appreciation of the interconnectedness of our different national histories, thus developing your understanding of global issues to give you opportunities to synthesize academic study, critical thinking and work experience, to promote your powers of critical reasoning, encouraging you to demonstrate independence of thought, provide you with opportunities to develop your ideas in the context of collaborative learning, allowing you to develop your capacity for teamwork and leadership, to develop advanced organizational, conceptual and communication skills that will enhance your employability. So a lot of these I hope um, I've kind of touched on before, but they, we really kind of work to enhance all areas of different skills um, and ideas, uh, pushing you in, in um, academic as well as practical sense and um, team, teamwork and through global perspectives as well to develop your skills and knowledge um, with hope in enhancing your employability as well. So how it works with online learning is that we have um, three trimesters over um, a year. For the MA in Public History and Heritage, we have two intakes per year, and that is September and in January. The terms in each trimester um, go over 10 weeks. So as you can see here, the autumn term is from September to December, spring from January to April, and then summer from May to August. Each module is worth 20 credits per trimester. So we have two modules that are worth 40 credits. That's the Public History Consultancy and the Independent Study. And as you'll see, those then stretch over two trimesters because they are 40 credits. We generally recommend that you spend about 200 hours um, per 20 credit module. And that equates to about 20 hours per week over those 10 weeks. So the assessments are generally due in that week 11 once the 10 weeks are all done. So this is an example of what you might study if you were, say, starting in September. This is currently how it runs, but obviously um, can be subject to change. So you start with the politics of history using the past in the present. Um, and this is kind of a very general um, public history type um, module, thinking about the uses and abuses of history, from how archives are created to how history is used in politics, 
um, then onto heritage management, funding and marketing, uh, which is kind of that introduction to many aspects of heritage, particularly important if you're completely new to the heritage sector. Um, and we will think about the aspects of how it's funded and how it's marketed as well. Then curation and conservation in the digital age. It's very much thinking about kind of objects and their life and the stories and how we interpret them. Um, whether that be kind of the biography of an object, so how our understanding of it can change over time to actually its life within, say, a museum or heritage site and um, what happens from accreditation through to disposal. Then we have modules looking at audiences and audience development. This is a really um, important module for the heritage sector right now, I'd say, and a number of our students have gone into audience related jobs afterwards. It's a really growing area that actually it's important to know who is coming through the door or coming to your website um, and who is not. And we think a lot and talk a lot about how we have this information, how we gather that information, what type of information is out there to support and contextualize that and ways you can change that as well. So what places are doing to develop their audiences, whether that's non-visitors or current visitors that they're trying to build a more meaningful relationship with. Current debates in global heritage. So this is very much making sure we've got that global perspective um, and you uh, research various aspects of global heritage in that to, to write your own and organize your own symposium and write your own paper for it. And then we've got the public history consultancy. And this is um, that partnership with an outside organization. You'll build a relationship with them and come up with a project um, that will benefit hopefully you to develop your skills, but also um, benefit them as well. You'll work very closely with your module tutor to, to develop this and develop that relationship um, and is a really key module for many people doing this MA to, to help further that um, employability goals that, that they have. And then we finish off with the independent study, which is your own personal research project that you'll have a supervisor from someone across the team um, here at Derby to support you in developing that research and, and writing a, a 15,000 word dissertation. So I've only hinted a few different types of assessment, but here I just wanted to kind of emphasize the, the wide ranging uh, type of assessment we have and the, the importance of the practical aspects. So these can be from designing a virtual museum and the curation and conservation module uh, to presenting an academic paper, as I mentioned, the symposium you will help to organize for the um, current debates in global heritage. Uh, preparing a funding bid for the heritage management funding and marketing, writing policy briefs as part of the politics of history, analysing audience data. We normally work with a, a heritage site who actually gives us some, some audience data. We work with the National Justice Museum and the Science Museum group who've given us real data that they've collected that you can analyse and as well as collect your own. You write your consultancy reports as part of the public history consultancy and alongside that, there are essays to do um, and extended um, academic research projects, obviously as part of the independent study, but as part of other modules as well. So the consultancy project, as I mentioned, can be a really important one for people. And we've had students do all sorts of different types of projects with all sorts of different types of organisations. Some students have a very clear idea of what type of thing they want to do. Others have a very clear idea of what type of organisation they want to work for. If you already work for a heritage organisation, students have developed projects with their current employers. Um, and it's very uh, important that, that we talk a lot about what you want to do and how you want to do it. So these are just some examples of the types of organisations that, that we have helped students set up projects with. They include the British Museum, English Heritage, National Trust and the National Holocaust Centre and Museum. But we'll start having conversations quite early on about what you'd like to do um, and how and when would be a good time to reach out to people as well. And the type of things people have done are just been 
very wide ranging from focusing on um, exhibitions and interpretation to doing audience um, and evaluations to thinking about the digital strategy. So um, assessing what kind of competitors are doing and putting together project plans for, for expanding their digital outputs to producing learning materials. Um, so education packs for schools to use on particular topics to presenting research to volunteers um, and doing their own um, audience research, say for um, disabled audiences or something like that. It really is um, wide ranging and can be in all sorts of different directions. So it's something that we talk a lot about to develop as early on as possible. And then what have people done after um, they've completed the um, MA? Again, it's really wide ranging. Um, people have gone into all sorts of different types of heritage jobs from, from front of house to more research to curatorial uh, to, to working with architects um, and researching the historic buildings to actually doing more um, audience type research and working with um, uh, consultancies themselves to develop um, projects. We've also had students go on to do further academic research and actually one of my PhD students was a former MA student and they're working on a project looking um, at the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. So hopefully this MA prepares you for all types of different uh, types of careers that you might want to go on to. And some of the skills we focus on, like writing funding applications, marketing, doing audience research, is yes, applicable to heritage, but also potentially other uh, charities or arts-based um, organisations as well. So what do our students think? Um, this is a lovely snippet from something from Ruth Gray, who was a student who is actually an artist by trade um, and had no heritage experience at all uh, before coming to the EMA. Uh, she was one of our on-campus students. Um, and as you can see there, got a lot out of or kind of support that we offer our students as well. We're always available for tutorials and for chats and, and um, sort of help with career guidance as well, as well as the other university um, systems and departments that, that can are there to support you as well. So Ruth has done great. She's finished um, her course um, on campus and now does research for um, an architectural firm into, into historic buildings and is really loving it. Tamsin Flannery is one of our current online learning students and is about to start uh, doing her independent study. Tamsin currently works for a National Trust property um, and again has some lovely things to say about us, but she has um, been doing fantastically well. Um, her consultancy she did based at the property she works at and has had some fantastic feedback and support from the trust in, in doing that. But it's also really enabled doing the MA. She's told us it's really enabled her to think about her career more broadly and start to think about applying for jobs and start applying for jobs, get interviews for things that she might not have thought of before, possibly connected to um, funding or audience engagement. So by become, joining us um, on online learning, you'd become part of a, a global professional network. We've got over 5,000 current students learning um, online with us. Um, and this is something Derby has really developed a specialism in. We've been doing it for two decades now. So it's something that um, we really are doing quite well. Um, so you'd be joining a wide range of people to help build your learning and support you um, through your learning journey. This is just a little insight of the type of uh, course material we produce. So we have um, sort of quizzes or padlets, um, tables and, and things for you to fill in uh, and quizzes to partake in and case studies for you to look at. So we really try and vary um, the online learning. It's not just a matter of sitting watching videos all day. We try and make it as interactive as possible. So, Doing this course really can help transform your future and take it in the direction that you want it to go in. It can help with career progression if you're already, say, in the heritage sector and wanting to progress in a particular way, or perhaps you're not sure what direction to progress in. Um, this course can maybe help you think those through or what, what skills you want to develop or further in the future. It enables you to do further academic study through doing the independent study in that um, 
longer academic research. Students have gone on to do PhD um, research as well. It's also been used by students as a way to change their career. Some people returning to study after a break, uh, some people really just wanting to change the direction that they're going in. We have such a big range of students coming to this course for a whole host of different reasons. And it's fantastic because they really support each other in different ways and bring a whole range of different experience, uh, lived experience and professional experience to the discussions, which are all extremely valuable. As I said, Derby has been doing uh, online learning for, for 20 years now, and they've really established this idea of your cloud campus. So I'm going to talk now a little bit about what that looks like and feels like for you. As online learners, we want you to have the best experience, but that does mean we need some dedication from you as well. And so with that in mind, we thought I'd touch on some aspects that would really help you in giving you a sort of success from the start of your learning. So creating a place to study is really important. So having your area and time uh, to devote to your studies. As we mentioned, we kind of ask that you protect about 20 hours per week. So this involves working through the activities that we set as part of each weekly unit. So there's 10 units per module. So that's normally one unit per week um, of the module, as well as working on your assessments as well. Regularly engage with uh, your peers and the academics. So your activities will ask you to engage with each other through discussion boards or write uh, things up in your personal journal that's just for your uh, module tutor to see. Um, but also you'll be invited to kind of come to live sessions as well where you can um, talk about things uh, with your cohort and with your um, academic leaders to, to really kind of uh, discuss points and think about assessments as well. Get into the habit of checking your learning portals, look at your emails, look at all the additional resources. I'll touch a bit on kind of the, the additional resources you have available, but there's all sorts of different ways that, that Derby is here to support you in your learning, not just through doing the MA activities and units and assessments. And please don't leave the assignment to the last minute. As I mentioned, most assignments are due in that week 11 at the end of your module. And we'll be talking about them from as early as, you know, week two or three, um, enabling you to kind of come to live sessions and, and talk about what's required and think about them. So please do um, come to those or watch the recordings if you're unable to. Uh, they're always recorded and accessible to students if you can't make a live session um, and arrange tutorials as well. Um, we're always here and available to try and um, talk to you about assignments as well. So, so don't think that you need to um, just get on with it on your own. It's, it's never like that as well. We're here to support you through it. It's also worth saying that, you know, tell your friends and family that you're doing this and kind of get their support and their buy in as well, hopefully. And that will help drive you forward and let them know that, that you, you need to carve out time to do this work as well. So as I've mentioned, there's various ways to engage with your online community um, and with your fellow students and with the academics as well. The discussion forums are really important. So there'll be times where you can come um, and talk to each other. And this is obviously um, asynchronous. So you will do it at the time that you are um, available. These things are available 24-7. Um, so they're there for you to do the work whenever you um, need to or you're, you're able to. Um, we have the sort of formal learning activities and discussion forums, but also informal areas. So like a cafe forum that really isn't a space for me to be involved in, but is a space for you as students to talk to each other and, and share your experiences. You'll have, get your own university email address. And this will be important for communications from me as program leader, as well as your module leaders. Um, and can be used between students as well, uh, particularly, you know, from student reps and, and the representations uh, of student um, to share your voice and, and your ideas and, and your experiences as well. 
Blackboard Collaborate is what we the system we use for live sessions. So we normally have about three per term. Um, they tend to focus particularly, say, on the assessments and what's expected for those and how to do them. Um, we try and figure out the best time for everyone to come along, but obviously that, that will inevitably mean that someone can't come along and we'll always record those sessions and share them with you afterwards so that everyone can engage with the content even if you can't come to the live session yourself. And as I mentioned, we are always available for tutorials. Um, so do get in touch if you need to have a chat about something, whether that's um, something that is academically really related to course content or whether you need to talk about extensions or, or change in personal circumstances or something and you, and you need to talk to us do get in touch with the relevant people whether that module leader a uh, program leader or um, other university uh, departments and we can set up a telephone or, or teams meeting as well Use your support network. We have a wide ranging support network, some of it that I've kind of hinted at already. Obviously, the academic team, you'll be assigned a personal academic tutor. So that is the person who will look um, after your kind of academic development throughout your course. So your module leaders may change, but your personal academic tutor will stay the same and you can have regular meetings and updates, catch ups with them. Um, and it's a really good place to kind of talk about um, sort of reoccurring um, aspects in your feedback from your assessments, things you want to work on, um, your aims and objectives and kind of big career goals as well. We've got the online learning advisors who are there for kind of non-academic content uh, type queries. So this includes enrollment fees, um, any kind of administrative aspects of it, and they are there for that, uh, your support in that. As University of Derby student, you have full access to our other services as well, and that includes student wellbeing, which is our support service for um, mental health aspects, for creating support plans. So that's if you have, say, something like dyslexia or something like that, they can create a support plan to make sure we as academic staff are supporting you in your learning as best as we can. Um, you have access to the library services, the careers and the union of students. As I mentioned, there'll be a student rep representing online learning students who will, is there to kind of gather feedback and support you and, and come and be that sort of gateway between the student group and me as well. Through being an online uh, student, you have access to Office 360, and that includes a terabyte of storage, as well as um, Microsoft packages, including Word, Excel, um, Forms, all, all types of useful PowerPoint tools in there as well. We realise that people are trying to fit this around their busy lives. So you obviously have access 24 seven to the student portal and the learning um, virtual learning environment to the Blackboard um, aspects of it, the discussion rooms, the personal journals, all those sorts of um, tools. But, you know, we are here to help if, if um, you have any difficulties or queries or you're not sure how things are working, do get in touch and we can normally help solve pr problems pretty quickly. To reflect uh, slightly on the uh, library resources, as a humanities subject, the, the library is our lab and is integral to us, but being online doesn't mean you're missing out on, on any um, resources. We have a great um, online reading lists for um, modules. Uh, you'll get a, a reading list for every module um, and there's lots and lots of online books and journals that you'll have access to. Um, the library service itself, librarians are on hand to help to set up um, quick sort of meetings. They also have lots of training sessions that they conduct online that you can join and be part of. Library Plus is sort of our, our academic version of Google and it's just a really fantastic resource for, where, resource for when you're starting to do um, research in any particular area and we'll make sure we kind of talk you through of how to use those. The sub subject librarians with expertise who I mentioned you can set up meetings with um, and can kind of help you navigate the library systems, um, look at the various databases that we have available that will be of use to you um, and they're to support in all, all sorts of um, academic library related um, issues. 
and each module will have a core and recommended reading. So particularly units will have suggested reading that you're doing as part of that weekly unit. Um, but also there'll be kind of extra readings that you, that you could do, sometimes optional readings um, that you can continue to explore as well. We've got a mix of really um, core important books that we use as part of our teaching, as well as access to sort of textbooks, um, all available in the e-library. Something worth mentioning is the Museum's Extra database, which is a very specialist collection of books published by Museums Extra um, that cover such a wide range, as you can see an example in the image, um, covering sort of interpretation or photography uh, or audiences or even shopping and shops and museums. We also have access to a wide range of really specialist journals from the curator to the public historian to museum management that will, will be um, extremely useful for your studies. So you may be learning online, but an important aspect, I think, of the MA is that we still welcome you on campus for graduation. So at the end of your three years, we'll invite you to Derby to come and have your, your graduation in person. And it's a really lovely event that you can invite friends and family to really celebrate what you've achieved over those three years. So that's it, um, I'm gonna stop there. But the next steps uh, for you now is to kind of think about, go on our websites and, and have a look at the entry requirements course fees, particular payment plans, and when the next intakes are. Have a look around, continue to explore, um, see if what more information that you need um, or more information that is available. And also think about signing up for some of our webinars that we hold across the year. But that's all for now. If you have any further questions, please do get in touch with the um, University Online Learning Team. Um, the details are on the slide here and on the website. Um, really hope to speak to you soon. Bye.